All right, so I have two Pioneer 10 inch subwoofers. Technically I have three, but I have two that need uh, repair. The one still works fine. The other two uh, have a slapping noise type of issue. Uh, these are a sealed suspension type of system <clears throat> where this entire chamber here is sealed between this surround and a lower surround. And um, this one was, this one had the biggest issue. This one here, I've already determined what the problem was. That problem was the surround here was lifting and the guy who I actually got these from had already tried to fix it with clear silicone. But as most people know, um, clear silicone doesn't really stick to plastic all that well, especially if you don't rough it up and clean it up and get all the contaminants off. So his repair would have been okay if he prepped it right, but he didn't. And uh, this sealed compression style woofer was leaking air there causing a slap sound. So I took as much of the silicone off, which took some of the foam with it, so I used some of this stuff here that I trust very well. I've used it many, many times. It works great. And I put a nice bead of it underneath and let that dry all under here. Once that dried, I took it out to my truck, tested it. It still made a very, very faint little noise and I realized that uh, some of the glue didn't actually stick in a couple areas. Um, so I went back over it and kind of doused it in this uh, epoxy and so far with the sealed suspension system it is very tight now before it was very loose you can see this one here if I push on this one it's loose this one here it's not it's actually a lot tighter now so this one is back to being a sealed system. This one on the other hand, I had a major problem. And the reason I'm even posting this is because I know somebody else may have the issue. For the record, this is a pain to get off. I tried to use my heat gun, found out today that my heat gun is actually broken. Um, and this dust cap actually trying to get it off I did use a hair dryer and it was doing the job but you can see right there at the corner of that P that I did crack it. So I am going to be doing a plastic weld here and more uh, epoxy there to seal that back up because something I found out about these sealed systems, oh yeah and this little reinforcement here that supports that center cap. Yeah, that's gone. That's done. Um, <laughs> but anyway, these these things need to be absolutely 100% sealed. Otherwise, they don't work properly and they make ridiculous noise. So if you look down inside here, this is where your terminals are for the dual voice coil. You see that your negatives both go here and here. And then you have a positive that runs, you know, along the edge here, and then across there, and then another positive wire that runs up to that tinsel leaf. My problem ended up being right, let's see if I can do this, right here at this joint, where this bottom part of the coil former and that surround meat had completely separated all the way around. So the top surround was actually still attached on like this one, this one here though, and I could see it from down inside. I don't know if we'll get very good. Yeah, no, you can't really see that up inside the vent holes. But anyway, take my word for it. That bottom piece was um, completely separated and the coil was just slapping around so I shimmed the coil with these shims I got for 
uh, a sound cubed 18. Come on now. Don't fight me. I think if I remember correctly, I put two, two shims in there. Now I know that some of these shims from Sound Cubed were actually uh, some were thicker than others, and I didn't even have to use them all when I reconed my 18 I got from them. Just trying to see if I can replicate what I did before. It's just not that easy to do with one hand, but anyway, you get the picture. So, um, I put two shims in here, and there was enough tension to lift this entire assembly up. And it, you know, held it into the up position. I mixed some of this together into a bowl, put a nice bead all the way around, let it sit. Now, nine times out of ten, you know, if you're going to do anything where you're gluing surrounds, Typically, you are going to put some weight on the cone and the surround so that, you know, it's nice and flush. There's no way to do that down here. So what I actually ended up doing was, um, once I glued all that and I made sure it was, you know, centered with all this uh, shimming and everything, I put a little bit of weight on it just to help it. Um, I don't know yet how much that did help it. Now that that has completely dried down there, I'm actually going to lift this around with the shims in. I'm going to lift this around and I'm going to put another bead around.